Can't stop thinking about the buckle fat pad. No, I really can actually. Uh, but one thing that is important to think about is the influence of facelift surgery on the buckle fat pad, as well as other anatomic features like the facial skeleton and facial musculature that can also impact it. I mean, I've done some background research lately on like the mewing theory and other things. And honestly, I think a lot about, you know, the muscular slings of the face and how this can impact the buckle fat pad. And also how can the buckle fat pad influence aging and make you look older? All of these things come to mind. There is no one answer for every single patient, but an understanding of the anatomy is a really important basis for a framework for your own understanding on how this can impact your own appearance. So without further ado, here's an anatomy lesson about the facial slings and weaknesses. Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Jonathan Zelkin, a board certified plastic surgeon in Newport Beach, California. Today I wanna to talk about facial anatomy and its relationship to the buccal fat pad and what the buccal fat pad is and where it lives and why all of these things are so complex and they really can't be predicted and yada, 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 yada. Anyway, without further ado, I wanna reintroduce you to a friend you guys have seen before in previous videos, my old friend Scully. And Scully here, has gotten a little bit of a paint job. And uh, by that I mean some electrical tape to show what the muscles of facial expression look like and also potentially what the buccal fat pad would look like in uh, relative uh, position to these muscles of facial expression as well as your facial skeleton. So without further ado, let me introduce Scully here. Scully, as you guys uh, may recall, is a skeleton that's based on a human model and so that this is fairly uh, typical of what the average human skull might look like. In this case, the yellow here represents the buccal fat pad. And the buccal fat pad is a deep structure that basically derives its own blood supply from a deep artery that invests it. And it kind of traverses between the buccal space, which is your cheek in other words, to your temporal hollow. And it actually, it actually traverses beneath this bridge that we call your zygomatic arch and malar bone right here to add some volume uh, in the mid face. And the uh, logic as to why we have this is its only theories and it really has more to do with the possibility of facilitating suckling in conjunction with the buccinator muscle, which is in blue here. The buccinator will squeeze the cheek, it's kind of the muscular lining of your cheek against your teeth and the buccal fat pad will sort of fill this void and, and slide and reduce and prolapse up and down to create a watertight seal upon mother's teeth. Uh, and in doing so, it creates a very important structure for not only suckling but also drinking and other, uh, other activities that might be of importance. Um, as we age, obviously, this does not become as important to our well-being as numerous uh, uh, men and women have volunteered to have their buccal fat pads removed and do not notice any change in their quality of life. But let's look at where the buccal fat pad is. Let's look at weaknesses of the face and see why people complain of buccal fat hollowness and perhaps why having your buccal fat pad removed doesn't actually make you look gaunt. Okay, so to, the framework of this discussion is to talk about different colors. The first color I wanna talk about is this blue color. The blue color here represents the lining of your cheek. It's called the buccinator muscle and it starts basically on your jawbone and above your back teeth on top and it meets up and joins forces with your orbicularis oris muscle which is an oral sphincter that allows your mouth to close when it's tightened or activated. Um, and this buccinator muscle oral sphincter combination is kind of inextricably linked. We call it a decussation as the fibers of one muscle sort of continue on to the other muscle. It's not a clear cut start and stop. Above or superficial to the buccinator muscle and deep to the masseter muscle, which helps close your jaw and gets you these clenching muscles back here, um, is the buccal space. And the buccal space has sort of a floor and a ceiling. The ceiling in this case is gonna be the elevator muscles to the lips, namely the zygomaticus major muscle, which starts at your cheekbone and comes down. Um, and then below that, you've got depressor muscles of the lips. You've got the depressor anguli oris muscle, which continues to the platysma. And you've got branches and, and essentially fibers of that muscle that consider, which continue 
uh, fairly far backwards. But between this area, between the masseter muscle and the depressor muscle of the lower lip and the corner of your mouth, which we call the modiolus, and the elevator muscles, in this case the zygomaticus major, you can see that there is a triangular shaped area of weakness. And this weakness is really covered by the SMAS. And the SMAS is something you've all heard of in terms of facelift technique. We try to get below the SMAS and we pull it to try and recruit all these muscles and overlying soft tissue back with it. Yes, this is definitely the most effective way of achieving a long-term durable and natural result in the facelift, but what are we really doing? We are pulling back structures, in many cases, the SMAS, and we know that the SMAS naturally sort of attenuates or gets weaker as we approach the corner of the mouth. So what we're doing is we're kind of pulling back the covers of whatever it is that's holding this buckle fat pad in place and stopping it from spilling out. So when we do that, sometimes it's possible that the buccal fat pad is gonna to continue to prolapse out since we've weakened its overlying coverage. And when that happens, you can kind of see a bulge in the corner of the mouth back here, which is the basis of some of the videos that I've created in the past. I call it the buccal bulge deformity after facelift. And I've been seeing more and more of it lately in my practice as the deep plane facelift and other lesser invasive techniques like skin only facelifts start to regain more popularity in the mainstream. So. These are the anatomic causes for why we have buccal bulge in the first place, with or without a facelift. Even if you haven't had a facelift, it's really possible, a lot of people have it naturally, where this mass is weak enough that based on facial posturing, you can get some buccal prolapse as well. If you've got a large buccal fat pad or a prolapsing buccal fat pad, it is conceivable that a thin, soft tissue envelope that overlies it will reveal its shape and its mass and its burden. So taking it out through the inside of your mouth obviously relieves, alleviates a, a point of bulging. Um, and so that is the concept for the buccal fat pad removal procedure. In my practice, people don't complain about looking gaunt afterwards. Obviously, things like weight loss, uh, taking medication for sudden weight loss, causes general soft tissue loss in the face, which makes things like the cheekbones more visible, the eyes more sunken, the temples hollower. We see all these things. This is what makes you look gaunt, not creating a little bit less bulging in this one specific part of your face. This is why I love the buccal fat pad removal procedure. This is why it's such an important part of my facelift practice. And this is why I feel strongly that its removal does not necessarily make you look gaunt or will make you regret it in the future. I hope this little anatomic explanation helps some of you guys better understand the position of the buccal fat pad in the face and how it impacts our day-to-day -day lives and my own facelift practice. If you have any additional questions, don't hesitate to leave them in the comments section below. While you're at it, please turn your notifications on, subscribe, and make sure that uh, you share this with a friend. I hope this helps. Have a great Thanksgiving and a happy holiday season. Take care.